I was the outcast. The outcast. Oh. <laughs> I wasn't allowed to send you an email today. What? Did what? you get any emails from me? N- the only email I seen from you was the one where you search for the hidden element. Search for the hidden elements. Yeah. Yeah, was that on a reply from a previous email? No, it was just a post that you made to send out to everybody, I guess. Is that on the G360? Yeah. Because every G360 post I sent out from here, Uh I was told unable to deliver. (laughs) And I sent it out about ten times. Uh well, you just and, tried. and then I found an old email from you, mm-hmm. and I put it on there. I wiped out the message that was there, and I sent it out to you. But it would have only your name on it. Uh, I don't. I didn't get anything else. Huh. So all the other ones I sent didn't get out. So the one you got must be the one. On the email. Yeah. The the one sent directly as a response to you. No, I, this wasn't sent as directly because it doesn't say, um, it doesn't, it's not, um, uh, it's not as like a reply. It's like, like, like all your other posts that you make. So, so one of them got through, uh-huh. but even the email didn't get through. Yeah. Because I kept trying and trying and trying. Uh, all kinds of different ways, and and out of all the emails I sent, uh-huh. that was the only one. Uh, I'm the outcast. Yeah, everybody on that list uh, should basically be calling me to say how come I haven't received anything. But mm-hmm. if one of them got through, you know, that's well, I'm um. I'm signed on to you. Uh, I have another email that you sent stuff to, but I don't really check it that much. I'll check that one. That one might have it. <clears throat> so, so why they would do that? Yeah, I had to ask you a question. Um, um, when like the Book of Enoch, for example, like do you? Th- does it matter if those books are printed before World War One? Books like that. Of course. Oh, uh, all right. Of course. Because I was looking at uh, uh, the problem you have as well is is that uh, they were not written in English. Mm. So anybody who's ba- translating the book yeah. can manipulate the information. So I have to read like different versions, I guess, right? Yeah. Usually, if you have a number of people writing on the same topic. They they cover up different parts, and by reading all of them, you get to find the missing pieces. Mm. So that's what I'm gonna have to do then. Yeah. I I, I came across a book, the uh, antique book, um, by John Bunyan. It's called the uh, Pilgrim's Progress. Have you ever read through that? Yeah. Uh, did you uh? Anything not interesting in there? Well, it's one of their classics. Uh, you know, it's uh, uh, basically all about the progress. Mm. That's why uh, Democrats and left-wing people always refer to themselves as progressives. Mm. And and the the uh, conservative gang who are basically left-leaning, call themselves progressive conservatives. Mm. That, that's an oxymoron. <laughs> I noticed that, like, a lot of people talk about these uh, neocons that were yeah. in Bush. And um, they, I guess they almost made themselves, like... Uh, get a lot of attention by being um, like the bad guy, I guess. Yeah. 
and and another group which is uh, uh another oxymoron was, was liberals because they pretend to be uh what's it called? open to ideas and different beliefs but really the the exact opposite word that describes all these people mm. is monolatry. Monolatry? Yeah, that, that means the love of one. <laughs> the one, one O? Oh. Well, the one is basically a pseudo hermaphrodite. Mm. Ten. The future slave of the universe. Yeah, another a classic. I think it's a classic. I was looking at um, it's a thousand and one nights. Or yeah, whatever. Persian. Yeah. Persian stories, uh, and and the most important uh, there is the story of Esther. Esther. Mm. Esther uh, is in the harem of the king, mm-hmm. and she's a Jewish girl who is brought in as as uh, part of the uh, gathering they did of all the priests in mm-hmm. in uh, Israel and brought them for retraining in Zoroastrianism uh, and they spent 49 years in Persia so she was put in the king's harem, and she gave him something that he could never forget. Mm, she was a gypsy. <laughs> yeah. And and he then promised her anything she wanted, and what she chose was to have her uncle made prime minister. By becoming prime minister, he also became the minister of finance and therefore, um, a Hebrew mm-hmm. became the controller of the money of their enemies, the Persians, the so-called enemies, mm-hmm. Persians. But you have to distinguish between the Jewish and Judean. Yes. These people who went for retraining were all Judeans. Mm-hmm. The Jewish were kind of shipped out. Mm. Sent places where they ended up, like in Spain and France and Holland and a whole bunch of other places in Europe. Who's that group of people I went to, Germany? Well, uh, the uh, the priests that came back mm-hmm. from uh, their 49 years in, in Persia, not exactly the same people, but the descendants of, because many of those people had died, and it's their children mm-hmm. who came back with Zoroaster, Captain not Zoroaster, Captain uh, uh, Zoro Babel, mm-hmm. and uh, they were not accepted. But a, a few survivors in Israel, and finally they decided to move out, and that was. Uh, about 35, 37 years after they had returned from Persia. They settled, they moved to Germany. At the time, they they called it Frankland. They called themselves the Thalian Franks, which basically is a play on the word Aryan, meant at the time Persian. Persians were people who had moved to that area from India. Hindu Persian is the basis of modern Western languages. Now, um, what's it called? These, um, these, uh, wow, I just had a thought in my head and it dropped that. Um, yeah, when they, the Franks. So when they called the the currency Franks. Yeah. What was that? I was link, that's linked to. to R N. R A M K. Oh. Rank Xerox. Huh. So it was a Rank, copy or something. 
well, it's basically telling you they are there to make copies, make oh. different people by by the thousands. Oh, and the, yeah. and the new copy culture, right? Of you know, yeah. Rank uh, our anchor. Yeah, they have a. Uh, that's you know that's funny you mentioned that. I was just reading a little bit about that. They had they called it the arc and the anchor, yeah. and they said that this is uh, one interpretation. They say it, the ship because they said the ship was like I guess the body of some a person and. The stormy seas was life, and the anchor uh, you know, brought them Mount, down. Mount Ararat. Mount Ararat. Is in, uh, what do you call it, uh, Armenia. Mm-hmm. There are two Ararats, if you look up there. There's one next to Lake Van, mm-hmm. and there's another one called Ararat, Inside the Armenian border. That's basically the area uh, that was occupied by the uh, Hurrites mm. and the Mitami, Mitani, Mit and Ani put together. And the Hurrites, this is the same, like Hurrite pictographs? These. Yeah, the Hurrites. Hurricane mm. was the area from which uh, Akhenaten uh, came back from. That's where he had been taken uh, originally by the uh, his guardian, who was a priest called I, A Y, I I, sir. I I yeah, you always say that. So uh, that's another thing too. This, you said with Esther, she was basically like some type of spy. Yeah, yeah. And, and so and when that, you... that was the the model mm-hmm. for marriage, oh. uh, because in the old days only royalty were married, because marriage was basically a contract for the transfer of land when a person died. So it was only the royals, mm. and they had to make a model for the woman of the house would, in fact, not be working for the house, but, in fact, would be spying for her own family. So she was given in an arranged marriage situation. And the king wasn't aware of this? Yeah. And the king was aware of it because he was doing it, too. It was being done in reverse. <laughs> just yeah. Like a, a agreement of let's just spy. Yeah, on you each. have your spy in my house. I have your my spy in your house. <laughs> but but when it, it when it came time to do the Magna Carta in England in 1215 A.D., mm-hmm. um, they used the cover of of that activity to introduce marriage to the commoners as well. Mm. So on on the first basis, it, they were introduced as as um, people who came there out of love, mm-hmm. but in fact, over time, they converted it to uh, arranged marriages. And the whole and, idea and you may not even know it's arranged anymore. The whole idea of love was was that like uh, that, that's uh, a crazy system. Yeah. Lo- love lasts four years. Yeah. <laughs> you're you're crazy for four years. After that, you wake up and you want to get out of what. You're in. <laughs> was that I, I was saying? Was that um, like thought? Was it the Roma that came up with that? Because it's in rom- ro- romantic. Ro- Roma. Roma. Yeah. So they came up with this. Yeah, it was brought as part of the plan. The the love religion was Buddhism as opposed to Brahmism. The Western version, Brahmism is Judaism, mm-hmm. and 
and Buddhism is Christianity. It's all in the glove, love. Mm. That's why Michael Jackson handed out a glove, because it's a basic hint of things to come in the future. Mitanni was suggesting that they were at the time of the mit. And down the line, there would be the time of the glove. Well, the glove basically means going off the planet, going and establishing themselves in space. Four directions are the four fingers, Mm -hmm. and the thumb is the guy who waits back home for the results. The glove is the more modern yeah, whereas the mitt had three together, the woman of the household, the little finger, and the controller, the Vatican, or the Roma, oh. is basically the thumb. Closes in on things. A, little a hand could not do the things it does without a thumb. Yeah, and that word... Spies or spy, yeah. it, it has eyes in it, <laughs> and and I guess S was shaping, and P could be a six or a nine, I guess. E S at the end just means here. E C is how it's pronounced. Yeah. So you're left with S P I, and and S P I is pronounced piss. So at the end of something, you piss because mm-hmm. dead cells. That's what the body does: gets rid of its dead cells. Yeah. I remember pissing you, basically means I'm finished here. I, I remember you saying like a, like a conglomerate of like a whole bunch of activities uh, of events that happen in, in this world is really like an allegory of uh, the. The the body, yeah. the human body. Like I'm a the digestive tract starts always with an O E, and that's why esophagus is the place where the digestive tract begins. It ends with piss, mm. and you know that they never consider the first or the last to be important. Mm. So you have to back up one from piss and that's shit and therefore the important ones are the Shiite Mm. and they call them um, Islam there is no L and what you're left is Ami Ami means friend the original zeros Siwa in Hindu Yeah, I, I just need to get into like this older. How how are you, how are you able to? Uh, what's the word like? Track these these people and like their descendants, like you're able to, because they they can they throw everybody off by having you name syllables. Uh, you use the language basic common denominator. The philosopher's stone mm-hmm. is basically the building block. Well, yeah, I use syllables too, but I haven't been able to... Uh, I mean, I, I can see a lot of things, but I guess I need to look at it longer. Or, because like the syllables, I, I can break down a lot of words. I'll see something... I mean, the, the syllable will mean something else than what the word outwardly implies, I guess. Yeah. And but, that's what you have to work on. Is, yeah. is the, the structure of words beginning with syllables. Each yeah. word you come across, and you have to say, what does this word really mean? Mm-hmm. And you extract the syllable or syllables from it, mm-hmm. and you say, okay, where would this appear? In what other words would this appear? And then you say, okay, if it was spelled backwards, Mm -hmm. or if the letters in the syllable were scrambled, what words would appear? And then 
if you flip it over, mm-hmm. uh, what does a W become? It becomes an M. Yeah, you with that. Mm-hmm. You got to go through all of these procedures, and eventually you're doing it in your head. Yeah, yeah. It's like uh, it's almost like uh, tri- like Pavlov training yourself. Yeah. <laughs> in a sense. Like I've seen that um, with the the people who do the garbage around here, because I know it's like a mafia whatever system, but um, they they call it waste management, and it's a W and an M close together. Yeah. And and, and I'm thinking like that. That what does that mean? W like, W or M M, and they're looking for the last or the third W. The big W is is the um, the W in the sky at certain times of the year in in Cassiopeia. Find it by the big W, and and during the year it shifts and becomes an M. So they they have a calendar based upon certain things can be done when it's an M, and certain things can be done when it's a W. And at one certain stage, uh, there will be a supernova attached to all of that. And that will be the hint that something cataclysmic is about to happen on Earth. Yeah, I just watched the movie that uh, Dana told me to watch. It's called The Knowing. Mm-hmm. And then how they all die is just these only two children, they, they get chosen by some alien race they're chosen to I guess repopulate somewhere else mm-hmm. and then they show them uh, running on the field towards a tree and I guess that's linked to the spine or something and then they show and then the whole planet everybody is like a solar flare that just kills everybody on the planet yeah so I well, guess that's in, all there in the mythology it talks about there are only two survivors Now, are those two survivors within the same person? Hmm. Talking about a hermaphrodite. Of course, they're, you know, in, in Egyptian mythology, they talk about somebody called Tefnut. Mm-hmm. You know, Teflon and Tough Nut. <laughs> so, somebody is described a woman who has a single testicle. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah. Okay, click there. Yeah, that was my phone. Uh, so, yeah, with the syllables, like I'm looking out of water right now, antediluvian masonry, and this is all about... Yeah, before the... Uh, flood. The flood. Yeah, so when you look at the word, it says anti, so that's the Nazi... And the saint. Yeah. Always two sides. Mm. And then you have ant and ten. And ten. It ant. <laughs> it ten. Oh, wow. There's a lot of. That word, anti or saint, is, that's a lot of. Um, uh, coding. T A I N means mirror image. It ain't. It ain't. A I N T. Yeah, I was reading one of your older posts. It's a really good one. Uh, talk about the Ginny. Yeah. <laughs> the Ginny. Um. Rub the bottle, your slave comes out. Yeah, and that's uh, there's a song by a pop singer called Christina Aguilera. She's like, I'm a genie in a bottle. Rub me the right way and. Do for you what nobody's ever done. <laughs> so she was saying, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I just was made in the lab. Yep. <laughs> yeah. And most people haven't got a clue. <laughs> oh man, it, it's it's weird. You, you're all right though. They do kind of make it funny, like. Yeah. Well, I mean, they gotta have some fun. <laughs> kind of stuck. Yeah. Where they are and yeah. oh man, <laughs> Dude, uh, 
So did you make any progress over there? Were you all right? Well, right now I'm I'm basically help helping out the cell a bit in in the part that we had to track the underground. Mm-hmm. But I think they're kind of pissed off right now because of this problem we're having with the police mm-hmm. that manufactured phony accident report on Tom here mm-hmm. so that they could boost up the insurance price. They're they're basically saying, you know, this this is the kind of activity that will ruin it for this area because one of the reasons the project I was building was uh shut down mm-hmm. in uh in Hull, Gatineau, the first time near Ottawa, Mm -hmm. across the river from Ottawa, was that uh, they had concluded that all of the politicians and police in the area were corrupt. Normally, they would have come in, the Japanese and the Latvians, and they would have taken over from the pension funds after I was declared the the, uh, president for life. Mm-hmm. Of our project because that was our contract. Um, so instead, they they decided not to fund it, to just let it shut down, and wait for another opportunity. So when the farm came up here, uh, that basically uh, was one of the conditions that the politicians and the police in this area not be as corrupt as the ones in Quebec. They they couldn't say not corrupt because they're all corrupt to some yeah. extent, but they said not as corrupt. And that appeared to be the case surface wise uh, until this event of fabricating a false accident report so that the insurance companies could benefit, and now they're they're saying, you know, the, the financing will be in jeopardy if uh, the politicians don't straighten this out. So I haven't received a response yet from the politician that I wrote to, mm-hmm. and that was uh, over a week ago. So I'm going to go to his office next week, see if there's any action going on in this manner, because if there isn't, then uh, the possibility of the project being built here and and five to 10,000 jobs created will disappear from underneath us. It's not the end of the world because it basically um, means, you know, that we can continue with the farm if we raise the money for the excavation someplace else. But this was the the best shortcut. You could put the two things together, the excavation of the farm and the building of the project for the long-term solution. But if the cops are corrupt here, um, probably is no long-term solution. They have a, a third place in mind, which is strike three, they call it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's called Timmins, Ontario. It's about 100 miles, I guess, north of here. Uh, and it's linked to the word mit mm-hmm. and to the uh, word min, as in Brahmin, and It's known for uh, nickel mining, which attaches it to the pickle and uh, Ike Eisenhower and David Ike and all of those other Mm -hmm. icky things that one finds. Uh, But I'm not interested in in going up to Timmins and working on on the project. So if it dies here... As far as I'm concerned, it's dead, and I will not be part of any project outside of here. Mm-hmm. 
and and if, if I'm not part of it, they're not doing it. So, a hundred and sixty million dollar investment and five to ten thousand jobs goes down the drain because some asshole policeman wants to make a few bucks off of uh, kickbacks. Right. The gratification, right? Hey? Instant gratification, right? Yeah. Well, that's why their name is at the front of Copperlight. <laughs> Cops and pros mm -hmm. are light in the head. They just basically do what they're told. Professionals, whether they're athletes or or um, actors, well, you got to see how they, how they think. Though, like I went to school with people who you would know, you would know would become cops. So yeah, he, he, the same type of thinking as cops, military, yeah. sports player. Crooks with a tie. Okay. But their whole psychology is, is different. Like they yeah. believe in like violence. Violence, teamwork, we're all part of the same team. You know, um just the whole outlook on life is really yeah. it's predictable thinking. Yeah. But um yeah. I've been having dreams about this whole thing. <laughs> yeah. But like I had one dream, I, it was weird, man. Like, uh, one dream, I think I seen you at my job, and that lady, uh, the lady that came up there, you said with the um, uh, with the with her son. Oh uh, yeah, she just put us off again. She she had planned on coming. Mm -hmm. In November, and then she put it off until January, mm -hmm. and and uh, now that I turned down, like the guy from uh, California mm -hmm. had called and he wanted to come up this winter, and I said there's no room. Mm -hmm. Well, now there is room, but I don't know how to get a hold of him anyway. Yeah, I'm in this dream. Like it was like she was trying to control you or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having weird dreams like that, but about well, the she was trying to control me. That may be the reason why uh -huh. she's not coming up because she's not certain yeah. of of uh, her ability to do that. And and I can guarantee you, uh -huh. it ain't gonna happen. Yeah. I'm I'm sure yours is. I'm sure there have been people up there. No, you don't mention that. Try to uh, control and manipulate or whatever. I've been through all of that enough times in my life to know yeah. when it's happening and uh, not to fall for it. Yeah. And it doesn't matter whether they offer sex or money or uh, whatever. Mm -hmm. I don't do what other people want me to do. I do what is right yeah. as far as I know it to be. Yeah. Oh. Like, I, I think if somebody wanted to use me for sex, I think uh, I'd let them use me for sex, but I'm not going to, just because I had sex, I don't think I'm going to, um, what's it called, do what they want me to do. Yeah, well, <laughs> even sex, Mm -hmm. um, you have to have uh, a reason for it, or you're crazy. Yeah. You're in love. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I've never. You know what? I'm I'm a person who's never been in love before in my life, so I don't know wh what it is. Still, you know. Well, you, you don't really need to be crazy. <laughs> Yeah. And uh, to me, I have, and uh, I, I uh, now know exactly how it works. It's different 
when you're approaching it for the first time or second time, um, you're always dreaming of the uh, mythology of marriage, you know, for a <laughs> lifetime, all this shit. Mm-hmm. You don't realize that it's it should basically be a four-year contract because you uh, come out of that state of uh, dizziness you're in in four years. You learn everything about each other, so there's nothing. Yeah. But the thing is, it's what keeps them together, a lot of people. It's just because they look, okay, I have a child. Now I have to, I'm responsible to yeah. a family. <laughs> 24 <laughs> years kept me together, you know, yeah. even though the marriage had, had basically finished after four years. I stayed on for 24 years oh. because the, uh, the kids had to grow up. and mm-hmm. All of that stuff. But say you, you're you with somebody for a few years, three, four years, and um, you have a child with them. This is the way society looks at it. Is, oh, you have a child, so you can't like just leave it to the lady to take care of. Sometimes it would be the best thing you could do yeah. for the family. It depends on the person. But... A lot of people mm. are assholes mm. in in the place they don't feel comfortable being in. And putting a family through that uh, would be terrible, worse than not having somebody there. Yeah. I don't consider that I was uh, an asshole <laughs> in my family and... and uh, it appears as if they got more pissed off at me when I left than when I was there. So that tells me that I was probably serving a function for them, if not for myself. Because it, I, I really don't see the, the problem. Okay, say the woman saying, "Oh, you, you got to take care of the, the child." I can understand, like, like what's the role really of the man in that? Because when you look at the, like the woman, like everything about them, when you look at them physically, it's designed <laughs> for that function of of taking care of a child. Yeah. What's the, the man? problem? Is mm-hmm. the women are no longer women. The women they were. So that them thinking like men. Yeah. And, and accumulation mm-hmm. is the key. And and that was the last thing that would have crossed a clan mother's mind at the beginning. She wasn't interested in accumulating anything. She was interested in making the life better for the clan. She was like Abel. She was a long time. Yeah. Okay. And man was gay. Yeah. Oh, man. Shit, man. But today, you know, it's almost impossible. I I can't find it. Yeah. Uh, a woman who gives her word that she's going to do something mm-hmm. and then proceeds to do it, even though doing it is uncomfortable for her. They always seem to have an excuse for not doing what they said they were going to do. And it may be just the women I know, but I've met enough women that I suspect there would be one who would be doing it for the bigger purpose of uh, saving the world or whatever. But I haven't been able to run across any. I I, I, I thought that was going to be the case with uh, with this uh, this woman that's moving up here, but again, you know, three three times 
when when the time approaches for her to do what she said she was going to do, she doesn't. Yeah, she she's probably maybe scared, or maybe you said that it's hard for women. To... Yeah, yeah, maybe what it is. Well, you got to see a society where the society like puts them the position they put them in. We we can't make judgments mm -hmm. because we haven't been put through the terrible things that women have been put through over the years because they've been the target. And, and oft times men have helped the system attack women. If you look at all of Asia and forcing women to wear burqas and Freedom as chattels, you stay in the house and you don't drive and you don't go outside and you know, all that crap. Mm -hmm. So all of that has had an impact on women over the millennia. You know what that's like to me? This is an analogy. That's like having a ship, right? And humanity is the ship. And on the compass on the ship is women. And then just taking the, the compass and smashing it on the ground. Yeah. Just that's like so like stupid. Like I guess they really don't think the men. I guess they really didn't think that much ahead. They didn't see that they were screwing themselves over by doing that to their own women. Yeah, they they thought that that would make them more powerful, and what it was was short term thinking. Yeah. Instant gratification. And then they say that it's so wise. Oh, the wise sages and the wise. This. No, they're not. Yeah. They can't. They're so. They're, they're hypocrites. Yeah. Huh. Cause that's what I'm so tired of seeing. Whenever you like. It's anything. All the movies and everything. Wise is equated to like these old wise men on top of the mountain or something or Chinese sages and stuff. But. They just um, goat herders. Yeah. And the reason why they use the, that sheep, uh, cattle, or sheep herders, shepherd, because those were the only, at least from what I see, they, they those were the people that survived the flood on like mountains and stuff. Yeah. So I guess they built off of that. Use that analogy. The problem. The problem is with the coming plan. Mm -hmm. CERN creating a spark. Yeah. There is no place to hide. Yeah. You can't go up, you can't go down, and you can't survive on the surface. So if you don't stop it from happening before it happens, then there's no sense at all. Then there's nothing you can do once it's happening. And the only people that know this is going to happen, they're quiet about this, right? The, yeah. At least people like like people like Maurice Strong. Does he? He's aware, right? Of course, he would be aware of uh, a lot of it. Whether he's aware of all of it, yeah. I, I suspect not, because you know, smart people aren't stupid enough yeah. to kill themselves. Knowingly, it's they they think they've been told that they're going to survive. They'll be brought into the safety of the Moho discontinuity. They just haven't had a chat with the computer, because the computer would say, "Why? What, what do I need you for?" Mm -hmm. you know? And those you people served your purpose. <laughs> and those people. Their servants, like I think, they're bred a, a, cer times, a yeah. certain way to think a certain way. Yeah. That way, they'll never really see it. They're just with that medulla. They're controlled, really. We that, we have an advantage when when we're poor, is we get to meet all kinds of people and get all kinds of opinions. But the really wealthy only hang around with their own crowd. And they all think alike, and they think the whole world thinks that way. Uh.
so they don't get the advantages at least that that we have of of hearing different opinions all right so they've actually wow they're actually really like controlled in that that's the control yep. they have their own places of paradise their places of holidays but they're all so expensive that they're not going to meet the average person there and they're, it's not the servants in the place who are going to tell them anything. And so, what do you think they think about poor people? Like, because they they never actually tried to jump out of that suit and, and like I don't know, pretend to be poor, or just are they scared of it? They're probably scared of like just yeah, being I'm around. Of it, yeah. uh, well, it, I looked. I seen uh, reading this encyclopedia. I seen this in uh, November second. All, all Souls Day. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know what's that uh, DNA day. Yeah, all Souls is the same thing as All Saints Day. Oh. It's Halloween. It's the, uh, the the holiday the church mm-hmm. describes as Halloween. Oh. So they're they're they have a fixed date. Probably based on a uh, on a Sunday or something, and often theirs is based on the lunar calendar, whereas ours is a fixed date based on a solar calendar. Yeah, there was just those two opposites. That's what Islam too is a, a lunar yeah. religion, and this is the sun, Christianity. And I guess the stars <laughs> of Judaism. You can, you can make a religion based upon the moon mm-hmm. if you know you're going to destroy it. Mm. Uh. Their whole world will be turned upside down when uh. the moon disappears and oh, gets replaced by a second sun. Uh. Wow, that's really, that's all allegory. Damn. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> Anyways, Jared, it's time for me to go prepare myself for bed. Really? I was outside a lot this afternoon, and uh, I had to bring some dates to the people out who are going to spend the night out. So I got to go and check up. Make sure everybody's okay before I get to bed. All right, Glenn. So I'll talk to you again. Mhm. And um, next time you call. Okay, Glenn. Okay. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.